Hey, welcome to day 18. Great to see you guys. My name is John, and joining us today is Blake Williams. Hi there. How you doing? And uh, Blake is on our staff, which is amazing to say. Uh, Blake was part of the first three people to start Mission Church. It was, uh, I think you were this, maybe the second or third phone call, but we've been buds for a long, long time, and Blake recently joined our team to help with connections, so he's our director of connections and, and care and all of that good stuff. So Blake, thanks for hanging with us today. Great to be here, excited. Yeah. Day 18. Yes. We're making some, we're making some ground, <laughs> making some headway. So if you guys are checking us out for the first time today, this is a 40-day Lenten devotional. Who knows, you may watch it at some other time of the year and you're like, what's Lent? Uh, just know that we're focused for 40 days being anchored in truth. We've been saying as a church for a number of months now that we're gonna train for transformation. Uh, we're not gonna accidentally wind up being shaped and molded more and more into the image of Jesus. No, we're gonna be intentional about it and we're gonna train. One of the ways we train for transformation is every day we get anchored in the truth of God. And so what we're doing is we're reading the one-year Bible and the one-year Bible every day, it offers an Old Testament, New Testament, Psalm, or Proverb. And what I do in prep for these devotionals is I'll read ahead and I'll pick one of those and we'll zero in on it and share some thoughts with you in less than 10 minutes. We'll see if we can get her done in less than 10 minutes. <laughs> Today's reading, we're gonna be in the New Testament. And Blake, what? Uh, what I've been sharing uh, with them, and I know you've been watching along, is we're in the Gospel of Luke, and I love Luke. It might be my favorite of all 66 books because Luke really says, in many ways, shouts hope for everyone. Mm. No matter who you are, no matter what's going on, no matter where you've been, this King, Jesus Christ, offers hope to you. And so this is the, the theme we're seeing over and over and over again. We're seeing that the broken, uh, even the demon-possessed, we're seeing that the outsiders, like all these folks, Jesus came to seek and save, right. to say there is a place for you around the table. And so some of you, you'd say, yeah, you feel like an outsider. I would just say, hey, read the Gospel of Luke, because in Luke, we see outsiders become insiders. We see the forgotten find a home and find a place around the table of Jesus. And so Luke is this story where hope is for everyone, uh, especially those that are hurting. And today we're going to read a story of someone that's hurting. This is an incredible story. Uh, maybe you've read it from Luke. It's in the Gospel of Mark as well. But let me read this. We'll start in verse 17, Luke 5, verse 17. Here we go. One day Jesus was teaching and the Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting there. They had come from every village of Galilee and from Judea and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was with Jesus to heal the sick. So we just talked about this, how there's no power like the power of Christ. He came preaching and demonstrating the kingdom of God, the rule and reign of Jesus, and we see sick people get healed. We saw it then in the ministry of Jesus. We see it now in the ministry of Jesus. And so we see the sick people getting healed, verse 18. Some men, I love that. If you have a highlighter, highlight that. We don't know their names. Some men in this school. Uh, I think in heaven one day we're going to meet all these uh, heroic no names in the word of God. Some men carrying a paralyzed man on a mat and tried to take him into the house to lay him before Jesus. When they could not find a way to do this because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and lowered him on his mat through the tiles into the middle of the crowd right in front of Jesus. Verse 20. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, friend, your sins are forgiven. This is interesting. He goes after the spiritual before the physical. That should uh, give us a clue mm. into the priority of the ministry of Jesus. Both matter, but one is priority. Verse 21, the Pharisees and the teachers of the law began thinking to themselves, who is this fellow who speaks blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God alone? I just imagine Jesus kind of giving a wink in that moment. He's like, I am God. Verse 22, <laughs> Jesus knew what they were thinking and asked, what are you thinking these things? Or why are you thinking these things in your hearts? Which is easier to say your sins are forgiven or say get up and walk? But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the paralyzed man, I tell you, get up, take your mat and go home. Immediately, he says, he stood up in front of them, took what he had been laying on and went home praising God. Verse 26 is like the obvious. Everyone was amazed mm. and gave praise to God. They were filled with awe and said, we have seen remarkable things today. Amen. Woo what a story. I love it. <laughs> so here's really the question. Who is on your mat and are you carrying them to Jesus? Who is on your mat and are you doing anything and everything possible to get them to Jesus? 
I want to ask the inverse of that question. Whose mat are you on? And are they carrying you to Jesus? Some of you watching today, uh, you're in a season of life where you are carrying folks that are on a mat. They're broken and hurting. You're carrying them to Jesus. The opposite can be true. A lot of you folks are watching this right now. The season of your life is a difficult, painful, broken season. And in that season, are you allowing others to carry you to Jesus? And so, Blake, uh, some folks know your story. Uh, I know it probably as good or better than anybody. Yes. And you have um, really, since the very beginning of your life, you've gone through a lot of pain and a lot of suffering. At the same time, I know your heart. Your heart, since the day I met you, what, 20 plus years ago, is you love carrying people to Jesus. Absolutely. You do. <laughs> and you will find a way. You'll, you have dug through uh, roofs before, uh, metaphorically. Uh, you've carried me to Jesus. You've carried so many people that are hurting, broken, confused, mm. disoriented. You've carried them to Jesus. And in many ways, that is your heart. Yet, especially over the last year, uh, a little more than a year ago, you lost your wife. And your wife passed away and you became a single dad in a moment that certainly we will never forget. In this past year, God has, he's been teaching you. Yes, uh, he has. And so maybe just share a little bit of what's on your heart today from this reading uh, to our friends today watching. Yeah, I'll read that. And I certainly think about seasons. And we, we always live through different seasons. And, and through most of my seasons of life, my heart is be a mat carrier. Help people get to Jesus. Help people get to better versions of themselves. Mm -hmm. I want to carry people's mats, and that is my heart. Uh, but I certainly have gone through many seasons where I find myself on the mat. Mm. And when you lose your spouse, I have found myself on the mat like I've never been before. Like dominated mm. on the mat, no choice to carry anybody else's. All I could do was try to worry about me and the kids. And mm. the first couple of weeks, all these people are rising up, saying, hey, let me carry your mat for you, Blake. And I'm like, no, I'm a mat carrier. You don't yes. get it. I don't let people carry my mat. I carry other people's mats. Mm. And it took me, thankfully, only about two weeks to humble myself mm. and, and accept the help of others. People have so many gifts and they mm. want to serve and they want to carry mats. So who am I to rob them of that joy? But it's, it's hard. It's a different perspective being on the mat versus being the one carrying the mat for someone else. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's one of the things that certainly we, we experience uh, maybe just a new... Uh, a new vantage point of the kingdom, or at least a new perspective of, of Jesus. It's one thing when we're carrying folks to Jesus. It's another thing being carried uh, by others to Jesus. Right. And uh, I just know that there's folks watching today that are still resisting letting mm -hmm. someone carry them to Jesus. Yeah. What would you say to, to that person? <sighs> Coach them up. Like, What would you say that you've been learning some of the hidden blessings of allowing others to carry you to Jesus. Yeah, well, certainly the Bible tells us that um, we're to allow people to share in our sufferings. Mm. And so we're going to suffer. We all are. We yeah. know that. And so why would I want to let people share in my suffering? Because the Bible tells us that it benefits not just you, me, the recipient huh. of that person's sharing and serving, but they benefit as well. Yeah. So who am I to rob someone else of the blessing that they want to be? Like, am mm. I better than them? Because mm. if the shoe's on the other foot and someone's telling me, no, Blake, you can't help me. I'm going to be upset. I've yeah. just been robbed of a chance to be a blessing to someone. Yeah. So it's really humbling yourself to mm. allow people to bless you the way that they want to. Yeah. Yeah. So who is on your mat and are you carrying them to Jesus? Whose mat are you on and are you willing? Are you letting them carry you to Jesus? Blake, I'd love for you to close uh, this episode today in a prayer, mm. uh, specifically praying for uh, folks that are walking a similar road that you're walking right now, a valley of loss, a valley of suffering, a valley of heartbreak, that you'd pray for them and that we'd be the kind of community uh, continuously that are carrying hurting people and hurting people are allowing us to carry them to Jesus. Close us up. Yeah, let's do it. God, thank you so much for seasons. Mm -hmm. And we want to be thankful in all seasons, whether we're on the mat or whether we're carrying God. Help us to be thankful. We know that you love us. We know that you care for us, God. And I just pray that you would give us the perspective that we need. Uh, allow us to humble ourselves when we need to, to accept the help of others. When we are hurting, when we're broken, when we're needing help, uh, allow us to let other people 
in God. Mm -hmm. And just as you did for this paralyzed man, you healed him. He did not stay on the mat forever, so we just thank you that uh, this is seasonal. We will one day be off that mat and we will be able to carry the mat for others again. So just help us whatever season we're in to draw closer to you, God, and learn from you. We love you, God. In Christ's name, amen. Hey, we'll see you guys tomorrow for day 19.